Catching up with Nashville Predators defenseman Alex Carrier. It's nice to say that, Alex. Nice to say Nashville Predators defenseman Alex Carrier. Congratulations. Uh, How is everything going? It's going great. Um, I've been with the team for a few weeks now. I got into a couple games. Uh, felt good on the ice. Uh, felt more confidence. Uh, like every game, I was feeling more confident. Played last game last night with uh, Jeremy Davis. So that was exciting. His first NHL game. Uh, we played together in Milwaukee, obviously. So it's uh, it's exciting. It's uh, I'm enjoying every minute of it and uh, trying to to play the best I can and uh, stay here the longest I can. Now Nashville played in last night's game six players uh, deemed rookies in the NHL. You're included in that, and it's so funny because you're in your fifth year as a pro. Uh, you made your NHL debut in two thousand in your rookie season, your 2016-17 season. So. Do you feel like a rookie? Uh, yes or no. Mostly no, though, I'll say, because, uh, like you said, I played I played before. I played a couple of games. Obviously, I didn't play enough games not to be considered a rookie. But uh, just by example, last night, it was uh, Davos' first game. And uh, I felt I felt not, another – we were both two rookies, right? But I felt, like, more uh, – with more experience. And that's crazy because I only played maybe six games. I, I don't even know. So – uh, it just, I feel really comfortable, to be honest, compared to uh, my first year that I played. Um, I'm, uh, I'm more ma- mature, obviously, physically, mentally, and I know what it takes to, uh, to stay in the league, to be uh, consistent and to make good plays. So I'm just enjoying myself. But uh, yeah, I'm a rookie, but I don't feel like a rookie at 24 well, anymore. You, you said you, six games or whatever. It was your eighth NHL game last night so that's awesome that's pretty good yeah (laughs) it is very good uh but you you said you played with Jeremy Davies who made his NHL debut you guys are the same age it's amazing I mean and people have different paths that they take yours was the junior route in Canada Jeremy went to college um so there are different routes and and all of that but when you look at that and you played with Jeremy last year when he was a a true professional rookie um it's kind of funny to see that you're in your fifth year and you're playing next to a guy playing his first game. That's, that's really strange, isn't it? It is. It was really, you're strange. a young man. You're a very young man still. Yes, I was, uh, and I was just trying to make him as comfortable as uh, he could be. Uh, obviously it was his first game. So everyone's nervous for his first game. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. All two different paths, like same age and everything, just different, different path, different, uh, Whatever, but it's good. I think uh, just today in practice, he told me uh, we were shooting after practice, and he's like, "Car, we're in the show. Like, <laughs> this is awesome. You know what I mean? So we're just uh, having fun, just enjoying, and hopefully we can help uh, the press uh, win more games." How about for you? When he says that to you, we're in the show. Do you pinch yourself? Do you do you still realize how? Spe- I mean, it's you, you, it's eight games that you played, right? And you played a lot of games in the American Hockey League with Milwaukee. But do you pinch yourself and like, wow? That, I mean, this is I got to do everything I can to stay here. Oh, totally. I uh, every time I come to the rink and I I look around, I see all the good players we're with. Uh, I played with Roman Yossi one of the games this year. Uh, I'm paired with. Um, at home uh, next game whatever so it's like um, I'm trying to take everything in because you never know what what can happen right you, you get an injury uh, someone's back and you don't have a spot anymore in the lineup so I'm uh, really trying to enjoy it as much as I can um, even like going to Chicago at the beginning of the season and then you know with both two teams or we're playing in a community uh, rink so it's different and then you you, you get here uh, private plane uh, really good food nice hotels uh, like best players in the world, I'm just not overwhelmed because I've worked my whole life to, to be here, but I'm very, uh, um, very humble and very uh, appreciate by, by that. I really appreciate everything that's happening. And I'm just trying to, to work hard, do my, my, my part and uh, stay here as long as I can. This year, we kind of figured that, and, and there is every year, right? You, you have to, when building an organization, you have to account for injuries that are going to happen. Um, and I think this year with the invention, so to speak, of the taxi squad, I think we we anticipated that that would be the case, that there would be injuries or that players would need nights off because of the schedule and all of that. But what Nashville is going through right now, injury-wise, I don't think anybody could have dreamed would have happened this year. 
No, exactly. I think uh, even my last two, three years, I feel like they, they did not really any injuries. Everyone was uh, LT, everyone was playing. And we uh, in, uh, in, the, in Milwaukee, we didn't really have any a lot of call-ups because everyone was LT. So I think it's uh, the schedule is crazy. We're playing, I think I've looked, we play, we're playing uh, 17 games the next uh, 31 days or something like that. So with all the traveling, it's uh, it's crazy, but uh, when uh, someone gets hurt, it's uh, opportunities for other guys, and I think it's our our uh, our part to uh, step in and uh, take make the most out of it. Yeah, make make management make a hard decision, right? That's what you want to do is make they have to make a difficult decision. Exactly, like after every game, they gotta come uh, in their meeting and they gotta be like, oh, that guy was good, like. It's going to be hard to take him out of the lineup. That's the mentality we're trying to have here. Um, and, you know, just being good pros outside and uh, on the ice um, and then performing uh, as well as we can. This year, with the amount of players who have AHL experience, and the vast majority of NHL players do, but not necessarily uh, have they been in the league in the last year or two, um, but your experiences in the AHL, when you say 17 games in 31 days, that is a lot, but at the same time, it's not foreign to you to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's not foreign for you to play Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday in three different cities with a bus ride for seven hours overnight and arriving at 5 a.m. So does that, and, and I don't know if that necessarily helps you, uh, but but maybe your your mind is better, right? Like you you understand your body a little better than, than players who haven't done that in the last couple of years. I don't want to put words into your mouth, but it would seem to me that that would be a logical conclusion. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, uh, especially now, uh, I got a, a sleeping watch so to track my sleep. Uh, I, I, I'm working with a nutritionist, and um, every day what I eat, I track what I eat. And then after um, every week, we tra- we're, we're like, okay, you got to eat more to be more prepared. Like, a bunch of games are coming. Um, you gotta eat more for energy and stuff like that, or you're you're losing weight there because obviously you didn't eat enough calories. So I think it's uh, my first year. I would have never done that. You know, having a nutritionist that follows me uh, during the season, having my watch that tell me, oh, you need more sleep tonight because you didn't sleep great great uh, uh, last night. So I think it's a, it's a process. Obviously, I wasn't like that my first year, but like you said, my fifth year, I've uh, I've learned to uh, to prepare myself better for a schedule like this. And in, the, in Milwaukee, we, uh, we had a lot of uh, games, back-to-backs, three and threes, uh, like you said, a lot of travel. So I think you, uh, you find yourself a routine and uh, it's, uh, it's often more mental than uh, physically that sometimes you'll get on the ice, your legs are gonna be fresh, but your mind will be more tired. And I think it's uh, that part of the game that you gotta, gotta work to, just to get to be more sharp and. Uh, just to keep a uh, shorter shift and be more simple. So it's uh, it's it, it's good though that we uh, I I uh, I did that in the minors, so uh, I can uh, now use it for for here with a season like that. Do you realize I would pay any amount of money at all to have somebody tell me I need to have more calories? <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know that's crazy because I'm trying to to maintain my weight every season. I lose so many. So, so much pound. And it, All right, we're going to end this call right now. We're, we're done with it. <laughs> uh, no. uh, speaking of mental, and I don't want to, I, I feel bad because I think I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but um, it, it it's trading season, right? Uh, how do you guys deal with that? Uh, and you, I mean, you've, you've been a pro athlete for quite some time. You've dealt with trade deadline stuff and all of that. Um, how do you guys deal with rumors and and things that are going on to be honest i try not to uh listen to uh any of that i uh so do you stay away from social media do you stay i mean or you just keep in touch with your friends as best you can and nobody else or because friends let things slip out i uh (laughs) you're right but i have uh deleted my twitter actually i still have an account and everything but i don't have the the, the app so i that's mostly where i would see like the rumors and like after a game like fans uh, like writing stuff and stuff like that so i decided to put that away just just to constrain constr- uh, concentrate on my game and stuff like that but um, every year is the same thing you try not to think about it you try to focus on what's important and what you can control um, and obviously this is something i cannot control so i'm just 
uh, playing hard, playing the best I can. And uh, if something happens, something happens. But if it doesn't, then it's like normal because I didn't even think about it, basically. Uh, a couple more for you. Uh, being on a taxi squad, it's it's like an extended black ace situation, isn't it? I mean, it's although there's probably you're going to play, you probably have a better feeling that you're going to play on a taxi squad than you do as a black ace in the playoffs. But uh, how difficult is it to stay motivated to be ready? Because it has been a full year now that you really didn't play hockey. I mean, granted, you have played for the last couple of months, but when you get into that situation again, to try to keep like, boy, is this ever going to end? Am I ever going to play a meaningful game again? It is. It's uh, I think that's the hardest part being on the taxi, taxi squad and not practicing with the team because some, some of the guys practice with the team, even if, the, if they're on the taxi squad, but some of them doesn't. And I think that's the hardest part because you feel like you're on the team, but you're like left out a little bit, kind of like black aces. Yeah. But I've been lucky since I'm here, I've been practicing with the team almost every day so i've been really lucky about that but uh, about motivation i think the the thing i tell myself is uh, when i was during a pandemic in montreal and we didn't know when the season was going to start and stuff like that i kept telling my girlfriend oh my god i can't wait for se- for hockey to be back and stuff like that and um when i have a like a bad day or whatever and motivation is it's harder you know it's i just try to m- remind myself like a couple of months ago, you were sitting at home doing nothing and you were miserable. You know, everyone, uh, I'm just trying to remind myself that I'm lucky to be here, even though uh, sometimes you're not in the lineup. Uh, I still got to work hard and uh, have it, having fun with it because uh, life is good. Can't complain right now. It's uh, traveling with the team, uh, playing games and uh, practicing with the team. So it's uh, it's been great. The last one for you here, and, and my wife is the one who, who asks me to ask this question, but what is it like to play? I mean, when you're in the NHL, you're playing in front of 15, 20,000 people. In the American Hockey League, there are nights you're playing in, in for, on, on the average, you're playing in front of 6,000 people or so ar- across the league. Uh, when you get into a situation like this and some buildings aren't allowing fans, some are uh, to a limited basis, what is it like to, to do that? And, and compare it to, uh, let's start with playing in Chicago first because there you're playing in the practice rink and it's cardboard cutouts and that's it. Yeah, no, that was tough. Uh, that was tougher in Chicago because it felt like uh, a scrimmage almost. Yeah. It, felt, it was really weird because even even the jerseys, we weren't with the, the Admirals, so that was weird. And then the rink is different. It's a smaller rink. Uh, it was, that was tough. But uh, here, even though there's, every game I played, there was like few fans in the stand. But I've uh, honestly, I've di- I didn't notice it. it I feel like uh, the building is it's still loud a little bit. I don't, I don't really. Uh, I thought I thought it was gonna be first. It, it's gonna be weird. So when, is it, when it's when it's loud, is it piped in crowd noise like over the loudspeakers, or is it just the music, or is it the the slapping of the sticks and the, the against the boards and all of that? Is that the ambiance that you that you're used to? That that that's where you say it's loud. Yeah, I think, but well, there's a, there's still like a few thousand people in the stands. Like even in Nashville, I think they they reach four thousand. Okay. So when when something happens, there's still a lot of noise. Like not as much as if the building was full, but you're like playing the game, you're uh, like focused on the game. So I don't really uh, see a difference to be honest. And the adrenaline is the same when we uh, we get on the ice. Everyone's pumped up. Everyone wants to win. Um, so it, it's uh, obviously not the same adrenaline with like a full building, but it's still uh, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great car. It's great to see you. Great to talk to you. Uh, best of luck. Uh, here's for you staying in the lineup uh, forever. And uh, we'll, uh, we hope to see you and talk to you real soon. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That's Nashville Predators defenseman, Alex Carrier.